morning, Grade 5 students. Once again, this is your teacher in Science 5, Miss Laura, greeting you a scientific day. For today, we will be learning another lesson which is very essential for us and is also connected to our lesson last week. So, let's not say any further. Let's start the lesson. We will start first with our learning target and let me read it to you. I can describe the intertidal zone and I can identify the subzones of intertidal zone. But of course, we could not achieve our learning target without anything to work on. So this is our work plan. Science bits, recall on estuaries, discussion on intertidal zone, activity on intertidal zone, and of course, our wrap up. For our science bits, I will remind the next science bits reporter to please prepare for his science bits so he or she can show and of course report to us the science bits in our synchronous class. So last week we talked about estuaries. Now let us try to recall about what we have learned in, an, in our lesson estuaries. So estuaries or estuary is a body of water near the coast where fresh water from rivers and streams flow into the ocean and mixes with salt water. Sometimes we call it bay, lagoon, or harbor. But then take note that estuaries were formed by the rising level of the sea water. According to the ecologist, estuaries are usually divided into three tidal zones. We call them supratidal, intertidal, and subtidal. They are subject to change water levels, temperature, oxygen content, and level of light. Supratidal is a place or an area which is seldom covered with water. Intertidal is an area exposed to air at low tide and submerged at high tide. Subtidal is an area that is always covered with water and is below the low tide line. As we proceed to our lesson for today, I have prepared questions which we are going to use in order for us to get deepen in our lesson. What are the organisms living in the inter intertidal zone? And what are the subzones of intertidal zone? So for today, we will learn about the intertidal zone. And so as we start our lesson, let us first watch this video. Welcome to the intertidal zones. The intertidal zones are the area between high and low tide. This area is exposed to air at low tide and submerged in water at high tide. The intertidal zones are located all over the world at every ocean coast. The supply of water is intermittent due to rising and falling tides. As the tide goes out, tide pools and shallow areas become vulnerable. There is high humidity and generally high precipitation. Temperature depends on your location on Earth. This biome has very high sun exposure and nutrients are supplied in high volume from off the coast. Phytoplankton, algae, and seaweed are the primary producers. It has a net primary productivity of 500. Organisms in this biome must adapt to harsh extremes that occur during low tide. They are exposed to direct sunlight, high temperatures, and must withstand being washed away by crashing waves. Plants that live in this biome include barnacles, green algae, and seaweed. Seaweed is adapted to the intertidal zones because its weight is supported by water, which allows for growth. Gas-filled bubbles throughout the plant cause blades to float and maximize photosynthesis. Animals in this biome include mussels, crabs, and sea stars. Sea stars detect light with eye spots on their arms, which allows them to move towards heat. Sea stars also have an organ that pumps water through their bodies. This creates suction on rocks to help them withstand waves. On your visit to the intertidal zones, you can enjoy activities like swimming, observing wildlife, exploring the tidal pools, which are puddles left in the rocks when the tide goes out, and hiking along the shore. The tidal pools of Olympic National Park in Washington State are well known for their wildlife. Be sure to visit the coral reefs for scuba diving, the mangrove swamps for canoeing, and the open ocean where you can parasail and snorkel. On an average summer day in the intertidal zones of the Northeast, you can expect very high temperatures, light rain showers, and very high humidity. If you're visiting in the summer, make sure to bring a bathing suit, a towel, water shoes, and sunscreen. The rest of the intertidal zones include visitors degrading the biome by stepping on organisms and habitats and taking creatures home. 
Coastal development pollutes with fertilizer and toxins. Garbage and waste is washed in through the watershed. Construction of piers and airstrips causes decrease in fish population because they have less places to breathe. The marine mollusk and some starfish are facing endangerment due to the overcollection and high levels of toxins and pollutions in the sea and oceans. Vegetated marshes and natural riparian marshes provide filtration for nutrients and pollutant runoff. It provides fishermen with economic stability and coastal towns with tourism. Regulating services provided to this biome include the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management Regulation and Enforcement, the Environmental Protection Agency, which protects the biome from human degradation, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Now let's talk about the intertidal zone. Intertidal zone is the area where land and sea meet each other. So this area is covered with water and the high at high tide and exposed to air at low tide. It com its communities are found in sandy beaches along the rocky shorelines. Like the estuaries, the intertidal zone is also divided into several zones. From the very dry land with the splash zone, a usually very dry area, and moving down to the littoral zone which is usually underwater. So we have this typical rocky shore. And this shore is divided into two. The first one is the spray zone. The spray zone is dry and covered by water only during storms and extremely high tide. It is perhaps more a part of land than the ocean. And it is submerged only during high tide and severe storms like what I've said earlier, but is repeatedly weighted by splashing waves and wind blowing spray. We usually see uh, lichens and periwinkles as the living organisms in this part of the intertidal zone. And of course, the second one is the intertidal zone. So the intertidal zone lies between the extremely high and low tide. Just like the estuaries, intertidal zones have also subzones. And let's further discuss each. The first one is the upper intertidal zone, or we call it upper mid littoral zone. The high tide zone is the area that is flooded during high tide only and can be out of water for a while. These are some of the marine animals and organisms that would eventually stay and live in the upper mid littoral zone. We have limpets, anemones, acorn barnacles, shore crabs, black turban snails, hermit crabs, and rockweeds. Take note that although there is an ambulance water, it is not high enough to sustain large amounts of vegetation. Rock pools inhabited by small fish and larger seaweeds can also be found in this zone. Another organism found here is the hermit crab. Okay, so this crab adapts extremely well since it is sheltered from the high temperature range by its portable home and in form of shell. So these are the following organisms that can survive and live in the upper mid littoral or we say high tide zone. The second zone or subzone of the intertidal zone is what we call mid intertidal zone or lower mid littoral. The middle tidal zone is flooded and unflooded twice a day with salt water from the tides. Because of its temperature are less extreme due to the shorter direct exposure to the sun, salinity is slightly higher than the ocean levels. However, wave actions is generally more extreme than high tide and spray zones. These are the following organisms or marine animals that could survive in the intertidal zone. We have gooseneck barnacles, Californian mussels, black leather chitons, anemones, okra sea star, and sea palms. There is a higher population of marine vegetation, specify or specifically seaweeds in the middle tide zone. 
And apart from being more populated, life in the middle tide zone is more diversified than the high tide and the splash zone. And the last zone of the intertidal zone is what we call lower intertidal zone or lower littoral. It is usually submerged with or only being exposed in very low tide. And of course, there is a great diversity in this zone since it is always covered with water. It is also protected from higher large predators uh, because of its rough waves and competitively shallow water. Organisms in this zone generally are not well adapted to periods of dryness and temperature extremes. And the following are the animals or living organisms that could survive in the lower littoral or in the low tide zone. We have the gambut chiton, the sea slug, ball kelp, kelp crabs, purple sea urchin, caroline algae, and the giant green sea anemone. In this area, creatures and marine vegetation can grow to larger sizes than the others in the other intertidal regions because of the re these reasons. There is more energy in this particular ecosystem, and there is better water coverage. The water is shallow enough to allow plenty of light to reach the vegetation to allow important food-making activity. The salinity is just enough to reach the at almost normal level. So that is all about the intertidal zone. As you take a look at this diagram, you can only see that the intertidal zone is just a piece of the ocean layer. So if we're going to zoom it out, it is just like this. And being emphasized in the screen, there are different zones or subzones of the intertidal zones, namely low tide zone, middle tide zone, high tide zone, and spray zone. So I hope we were able to achieve our learning target for today. If you have questions, thank you for listening first. If you have questions, you may ask it during our synchronous time. And of course, you can send me a message through Genio. You can also try to check your understanding about our lesson for today in the uploaded activity in this learning package about the intertidal zone. And of course, wrap everything up, wrap everything that you have learned through Tom's It. But before we end our lesson, I would like to share to you this quotation. Enjoy the little things in life. For one day, you'll look back and realize they were the big things. So just like this intertidal zone, as you have seen earlier, intertidal zone is just a small part of the ocean layer. But then it serves as one of the greatest or big things that would eventually give credits into our water or into our marine lives. So if you yourself, if you would apply this quotation into yourself, you try to appreciate the small things that you see. Look around you. Look about a look at the small things that the person would do and show to you and give what is the best on it. So that's the end of our learning or lesson for today. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Once again, this is your teacher saying a scientific day ahead. Goodbye and God bless.